Which do you think is mo more likely to come first, the end of days or the abrogation of the Novus Ordo Mass in the Second Vatican Council? <laughs> Uh, I say this jokingly, but in the words of Teilhard de Chardin, maybe there's an omega point where, you know, the end of days will come when the Novus Ordo ends and there'll be tradition and then the world will end. Uh, I'm just joking. I'm not a Teilhard de Chardin fan at all. Um, there's no omega point. There's no need to perfect theology. It's already perfected. Uh, God is already perfect. He's not in process. But, you know, I would say that probably at the end of my life, when I'm 80 years old, I could start seeing the changes take effect. Uh, the, the, the Novus Ordo church is a sinking ship. In fact, that was, that's a direct quote. Uh, it was built to sink. It's, you cannot save the Novus Ordo. Uh, you can hold on to it as much as you want, but as much as you hold on to it, it will sift through your hands uh, like water. You cannot hold water in both your hands. Eventually it'll sift through. Uh, the Novus Ordo uh, Ark is a sinking ship get out, get out, get out. So the, you know, going to any traditional priest who you know has the traditional valid orders is, is, is strongly encouraged because we don't want any doubt when it comes to the sacraments. The, the, the important point is, is that state of a contest, the people use this as a curse word, but it's not. It, it, it's, it's having a deep concern about the teachings of the papacy before the last 60 years. It's honoring Pope Gregory the 16th. If you don't know who Pope Gregory the 16th is, then all the more reason, you know, to look into it. In 1833, wrote a very imp important uh, papal bull uh, in support uh, against a, a lot of modernism uh, and against the Council of, and, and affirmation against the Council of Pistoia, which is probably another situation, another, another topic. Uh, you know, to talk about the Council of Pistoia. So in, in reference to the Council of Pistoia, this was in Pistoia, Italy. This was a few years before the French Revolution. So this was is in between the American Revolution and the French Revolution. The Council of Pistoia in northern Italy had the gathering of some 30 or so bishops, and they wanted to Protestantize the church. And they came across a number of uh, Practices in the Protestant world, they wanted to make Catholic. They wanted the Pope to approve it. Uh, the Pope at the time, during the Council of uh, the Synod of Pistoia, okay, you talk about this synodal path. This synodal path has been around since the Synod of Pistoia, okay? So this is nothing new. Uh, Protestantism is alive and well, and it needs to be expunged from the face of the earth. Uh, so, but the, the Pope at the time ended up writing refutations against it. Right, right. So uh, Denzinger, which is the Sources of Catholic Dogma, is the book that has the Council of Pistoia in it. And it has the, the concerns that the popes have about concerning it. And one of, uh, it's important to know that the, Council, the Synod of Pistoia, when Rome looked at the documents, they found, and I might get the numbers wrong, but it's about nine heresies and 16 schismatic acts. And some of them included, but not limited to, nuns not wearing habits anymore, mass being in the vernacular, the priest facing the people, uh, bishops, and this is important, bishops can throw away a priest with one accusation, credible or not, if there's a canonical conundrum with the priest, you can throw them out, that's the Synod of Pistoia, um, and that was deemed as a schismatic act. The current pope at the time says you can't just throw away a priest without due process because you're creating schism. So people want to claim that I'm being schismatic by being a state of a contest. And, and the thing is, is no, I, I wasn't the one that was committing the schismatic act. The Nova Sordo bishops who have no respect for history, have no respect for the papacy, uh, are committing schism by destroying priests' lives who have good reputations. They're destroying the reputations. That's schismatic. So don't call me schismatic. Okay, I'm, I'm following the papacy. Okay, so it's a matter of respecting our history. Uh, so, you know, and I think that anybody in the, in the traditional world, why do we get to this point? It's out of a love for God. It's out of a love for God and love for truth. And uh, by the God's grace, has we, have we been brought to tradition? Because it's the greatest means possible for salvation. You know, Christ said the narrow path, you know, Broad is the road to hell, and many people take it. Uh, maybe this can be another section. <laughs>
you know, but broad is the road to hell and many people take it and narrows the road to salvation and few people take it. Well, let's just do a statistics. You know, how many people on this planet are baptized? Okay. You might say a little less than half. Okay. So you have billions. Okay. That are baptized. Maybe. All right. They're father, son, Holy ghost. All right. How many of those baptized receive Holy communion? Okay. So you can, dramatically slash that with all the protestants that don't receive holy communion then you say okay well how many of those catholics or those christians who are baptized receiving holy communion go to confession regularly you know not just once a year or say Meh, maybe at the end of my life i'll go to confession well okay so that number is dramatically you know should, you know and then a fourth measurement am i living appropriate to my state in life I might be baptized, receiving communion, going to confession regularly, but am I living appropriate to my state in life? Am I abusing the mercy of God and saying that I have presumption of salvation because I'm frequenting the sacraments, but I'm going to live, continue living as I want? Well, and when you put it down in that perspective, you know, um, that's very few people on this planet. That's very few. Uh, so why am I a traditionalist? Catholic priest, uh, because I want the most help I can get to get to heaven. You know, I need as much help as I can get. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's ultimately why I, I made this decision. And I have no regrets. You know, I've only, I've only gains. You know, if I look behind and see what I've lost, you know, there will be a lot of sorrow. I'll look behind. But if I look forward uh, and see what the best that has yet to come. You know, and what God is doing to restore the Catholic life. You know, uh, we want to restore the Catholic Church. 